friends, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I recently heard on the radio that one of the most watched Christmas specials is still a Charlie Brown Christmas. For those of you not familiar with the story, the simple yet profound Christmas show, and I can't imagine there are too many in this room that don't know of this, it's about finding the true meaning of Christmas. You recall that Charlie Brown, that irascible yet lovable cartoon character, just isn't feeling the holiday cheer one Christmas. He searches among friends in unusual places to make sense out of this holiday that is so important in modern America. Lucy, the obnoxious friend, he interviews, and it turns out Lucy really wants real estate. Uh, Charlie Brown's dog, Snoopy, wants to have um, a lights and display contest. And Charlie's little sister, Sally, has Charlie write a letter to Santa about what she wants, preferably money. Tens and twenties, she says. Lucy asks Charlie to direct the Christmas play that year because she's sensing that he's kind of a little down. Maybe this would lift him up and he's ecstatic. Yet in the middle of the play, things are going terribly awry. All the kids want to do is to dance the silly dance. You may remember. Charlie and Linus go to find a Christmas tree, thinking that will help. They famously pick the smallest, scrawniest tree at the lot and bring it back to everyone's dismay. Good grief. They all laugh at Charlie, even his dog. I thought that was cruel, his dog laughing at him. But Charlie still wants to know the true meaning of Christmas. And Linus, you know, the one with the comfort blanket he never lets go of, comes out on stage and tells everyone the story from the Gospel of Luke that we just heard to explain that Christmas is not really about trees or presents, pageants or commercialism. Rather, Christmas lives in a much more unlikely place. The story is about shepherds in a field who hear the glorious sound of angels calling out and announcing the birth of a special baby in a little town called Bethlehem. Christmas is much simpler and much less stressful than most of us probably feel right now. The Charlie Brown special ends with Charlie's friends saving his tree after some magic hand waving. They walk over to Snoopy's house and then walk back and the tree suddenly looks great. And Lucy says, Charlie Brown is a blockhead, but he did pick out a nice tree. And then they sing Hark the Herald to Charlie with her nose pointed straight up in the air. The story of Jesus' birth as told by Luke begins in high places. The emperor of Rome, the greatest empire in the history of the world at that time, calls a census to have the entire populace of the empire registered. Basically, it was so that they could pay taxes. But then that's kind of it. That's all we hear about Caesar. It's almost like he's a footnote to the story, an excuse to tell the real story of Christmas. From the lofty heights of the capital in Rome, Luke's narrative quickly hones in on a simple family going to a small village on the outskirts of a place known for its exotic religion, Jerusalem and the town of Bethlehem. Imagine your Google application, your Google Earth application, honing in on a place that no one is looking at. Not Los Angeles or San Francisco, not Santa Barbara or Sacramento, but a place more like Davis. That's what Bethlehem was like. Known, but not well known to, to the, the entire world. Yet on this night, that's where the action is. Who are the people to report the message of something so important as the birth of a savior? You might expect there to be a celebrity or a well-known public figure that people can trust right off the bat. Perhaps a politician or a pop star. Someone like Barack Obama or Jerry Brown or Taylor Swift or Beyonce. They had those in the ancient world as well, but those are not the people to whom the message of salvation is entrusted. It is entrusted to people who couldn't find work doing anything else. Shepherds. Let's imagine in our contemporary scenario, a group of migrant farm workers in the Cape Valley. These are the people who are entrusted with important information about what's going on in our little town. Something's definitely happening, but it's happening in a place we least expect to a very unlikely crowd. They are the ones who hear the angelic chorus announcing the birth of a savior in a nearby city. They are the ones who go first to witness this birth. They are the ones to carry this message out to others. 
with great joy. We have to think along these lines when we read the story if we want to understand where Christmas truly lives. Shepherds are people that nobody cares about. Yet these are the people that God entrusts the message of salvation. And they go and they witness the baby in the most simple and rustic of settings, lying in a manger, a feed trough for animals. And they tell the world about Jesus. So caught up are they in God's glory on this most holy night. This is where Christmas lives, on the underside of history. It lives there because that's where God is. God doesn't care about the distinctions that we make or the positions of power and privilege that people build for themselves, defend, and so forth. God only cares about those Jesus was sent to save. And the story is about simple folk, shepherds, Mary, Joseph, a little baby, and the animals who keep in company, the people nobody's watching. Christmas truly comes from humble origins, yet it is for everyone. Many of our traditions at the holiday season have little to do with the actual story of Jesus. As Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown shows us with his existential crisis at the holiday, yet even that story has a happy ending. The baby Jesus was born for the whole world. The shepherd's jubilance and enthusiasm is rightly placed for they have found something truly special in the birth of this little baby, <coughs> even in the most unlikely places. The simplicity of the message should give us pause about where our focus is and where God's focus is. The truth is, God does not care about the things that many of us spend time and energy worrying about, especially not in the holiday season. But the message of Jesus should give us joy for tonight Salvation is born, and it's in the faces, in the face, and the cries, and the tussling of a little baby. This baby, our Lord Jesus Christ, is for you. He was born for you. He was born that you might know God's grace, that you might be drawn into a closer relationship with God and with one another. From humble origins, the history of the world will never quite be the same because of his baby. He will lead the way for a new movement to see the face of God as never before. The redemption of the world will be hammered home on a cross some 30 years later, an equally unlikely ending to a remarkable life. But this is where the story begins. As you go forth from this place to celebrate the holiday in the warmth of your homes and with the people you love, May you carry with you the memory of Jesus. May you see God in those places where no one is looking. And may you be in touch with the true spirit of where Christmas lives.